um, does a great job uh, with this. It's in the appendix of the report. Uh, so we kind of uh, modeled this after that concept. Um, and also calling for them to conduct regular tabletop exercises so that they know how to address uh, crowded conditions when they occur. Um, one thing there just, um, in the course of this report, how receptive transit has been to recommendations that we've been coming up with. Um, one of them uh, was this tabletop idea, which they seem to be moving on and finding out how to go about doing. <coughs> so there was real-time um, actions taken also as we were bringing up suggestions that they, they might think about. Explain tabletops. Excuse me? Uh, explain so, tabletop? uh, we've, we've gone to tabletops in emergency situations. We did one for, with Metro North, which is uh, what you have all the first responders around the table and you have a facilitator. And so that example was, okay, this just happened. You know, this train just, uh, there was a derailment. All right, so you're, you're at the station. What's the first person, what's the first thing you do? And they elicit what the first thing they do. Who do you call? And so what it does by this kind of rapid fire, what is, fire department, what are you going to do? Hospitals, what are you going to do? It elicits how prepared each person in their role or each department is to respond to an emergency situation. It also makes um, people who don't know each other just yeah, you know, come together. Faces and people's jobs change. But hi, I'm Carol Burt. You know, someday we may see each other in an emergency. And the takeaway from the table talk, the the purpose in as far as um, being men. Uh, homeland Security is then the takeaway is where do we need to put resources for the weaker group when we did one uh, Westchester Hospital uh, said oh we would closed down the emergency room don't bring anybody here and the crash was supposedly in White Plains so, so you saw <laughs> oh we need to put some resources there because that, that answer doesn't really work um, so doing something that they could do in-house to see how the rail control center responds, how the frontline staff responds, how New York City Transit Police respond to a, a crisis overcrowding type of situation. The problem with the tabletops yeah. exercise is that the executives oh, do it. There you, there the executives you. do it. The people responding are involved in that. You so the wait, let's, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's take all this. We've got okay. one more slide. Right. 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 One more slide. Right. And then, then, well, yeah. then we can definitely address right. these right. conversations. Uh -huh. All right, so <clears throat> feeding into that, uh, there's a lack of passenger-based crowding metrics, so we're calling for the creation of crowding metrics. Uh, another problem, as I mentioned before, is a uh, poor parallel surface transportation, uh, meaning buses. So what we want to see happen is an implementation and enforcement of a two-lane Lexington Avenue dedicated busway with transit signal priority. Um, basically, what we're seeing is that this would come in very handy when they are installing CBTC, that you're going to have to have alternative services. And because of the crowding, the deliveries, and the slow bus speeds on Lexington Avenue, we would like to see that regular traffic and deliveries be diverted to other streets that can handle it, and then be able to have the enforcement of a two-lane uh, dedicated busway going up and down. Uh, Lexington Avenue. Um, so, what can fast forward do to improve this route? Well, for the AMP, we know that the fast forward <coughs> time can be under 30 minutes. Uh, the transfer time can be as low as a little over two minutes, and the track uh, travel time between uh, Lex 59th Street and 14th Street can be as low as seven minutes. However, the average actual, if you can recall, is over 15 minutes. Uh, for the PMP, the, we know that the fastest trip time for the entire uh, trip can be as low as 28 minutes. Um, we would like to see improved reliability that would reduce periodic overcrowding along the stations going north on the Lexington Avenue line uh, with the 27% unsuccessful boardings at Fulton. Um, and then the transfer time at the Lex 59th Street station, the fastest uh, transfer time was a little over two minutes. And if you remember, some of the transfer times got as high as 36 minutes, which is completely mm -hmm. not sustainable. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's just one last thing. Is, yeah. yeah. It's, the purpose of this was to take the the broad of what fast forward is about and apply it to this route and create the vision of both the speeds that we think this trip could take and the experience of the overcrowding and all of the extreme stress that we heard from Bradley daily 
Um, even though it was convenient, it was not a fun 100 days, 100 days. I don't nights. take the route anymore. Um, <laughs> but, you right, put a right. helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> to see that the stress of this roof could be taken out with yeah. fast forward. And I, I, Judy, um, you get to go first. I want to just say that my um, first question I had when I saw this report was, where's the six train? So, um, so the, the fact that that's, I think, the question that you're at. What no, the it's not. It's okay, not but let me, just, let me just address what, um, if that is going to be a question that anybody else has, maybe we can say, put express or, you know, indicate that it's, a, make sure yeah, that we qualify that it's a, the express and doesn't include no, the six um, in, in our I conversation. Go ahead. Everything that this report talks about, the crowding at the station, everything else, 59th Street is as much, 59th and Lex, is as much of a transfer point for people coming in and out of Brooklyn, uh, the R, the W, and the N that are going to stations both north and south that are local stops. And unless you take into consideration the, first of all, going th between three levels, because the 456 is yeah. below the R and W, and then mm -hmm. you we have... Know. Good. And for those who don't know, who haven't gone to this station, okay? And then sometimes people, and the crowding on the platform, sometimes people will opt to take the number six to go downtown or uptown, even if they, because the four or five platform is so crowded. Right. And sometimes it will be just the opposite. And if there was no survey of what was doing on the number six, this also goes, and even more so, where the four or five, the four and five cross, and you don't have to go up and down, namely Grand Central, uh, 14th Street, and Brooklyn Bridge, which are also transfer points, mm -hmm. and unless you take into consideration that those are transfer points between the 4, 5, and the 6, and also at 14th Street is another transfer point for the R and the W that you can get, if you want to take that all the way down to 14th Street, and then you can get on the 4 or the 5 or the 6. All I'm saying is, uh, when by leaving the 6 out of this study, to me, it makes it moot. So it's a, but it's a study about these two specific lines. No, that would change, it, wait, Judy, I'm sorry. It, that would change the entire scope of the project. It would. It, so and but that's they, not but the project they are that not was done. Separate lines. What I'm trying to say when you're talking about we're, we're actually at the just reviewing Bradley's trip to work. Why would Bradley take a three-seat ride when he can take a two-seat ride? No, but it's not. Bra hand. If you're talking about in the report, I did not read it word for word for word. I have to say because I knew we were going to discuss it here. But it gives if someone is not familiar with the fact that the the number six runs parallel with the four and the five. You know what we can do, to Brooklyn Bridge. It's very simple. There should we be an addendum. We can put an explanation. We can put an asterisk. Right. And this say, exactly while the number six line and and in, and in this case the R line also serve this station and and contribute to the number of persons transferring and on platforms for the purposes of this particular trip, they were the, the only um, lines that were considered. Good. Then don't refer and don't refer to really? it as the Lexington yes. Avenue we'll line. We'll refer to it as the four and the five. Because the Lexington right. Avenue line yeah, is the four, five, and six. Yeah, we'll do Lexington Express. Lexington Express. 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 That's why. What I said. Yeah, but that's not what it's. Yes, Chris. Sorry, thank you, Judy. Can first of all, I'm not going to say anything about Question on the PowerPoint on the N, Q, and R and W. 34, so I definitely agree with you because you and I have mentioned this since. But there's one thing that I think we need to reach fix that because they have 57th Street and 7th Avenue has a two way, there's two switches to go into the 59th Street and 5th Avenue going towards the Queens. They have one in the front. I'm only totally talking uptown, so I'm going to make this clear. Uptown. There's yeah, a switch that goes in. It's just, and just before it enters 57th Street, there's one that goes into the local. Express. They need to do that because why do we need to end the switch at 34th Street that does kill the Q trains because in Brooklyn, sometimes the B has to come into the local because the waiting time for the Q kills it. It's like a chain reaction of the trains acting up. I definitely agree with the W trains to run a little more frequently, but some of that increasement is in, well, 
What? Oh, okay. What I'm trying to say is, is that 59th Street and Lex on the NRW is so overcrowded. Yeah. You need three trains. You need even three trains. Sometimes in the balloon room, you might need a fourth train sometimes. Yeah. And I just say that because so the I, loss of the R. If, if, if the R gets rerouted, as is one of the suggestions it, it, here, is even, additional W's. Yes. Oh. And the W should be anyway. Anyway. Yeah. But these are many oh, it surely end, should. But something's got to run and from that end. some W's should go through yeah. Brooklyn, too. That end, as well as Brooklyn, because on the R, if I have to come here early in the morning, I have to let two R's to go. Yeah. I know, but that's not what the scope is. No, no, I'm just, just putting an example. Right. It's somewhat yeah. the same reverse yeah. way. Yeah. Lisa, you're right. But it's still the reverse psychotic. I'm not going same reverse, it's overcrowded. Right. The yeah. ridership has rise. I have said this every every two months. So many of these will, uh, the, our recommendations, increase the throughput, and that's the point. Right. Yes. Between right. Ditmars and Nostrand, you can raise your trains per hour. And, and no train goes from Ditmars to Nostrand. Okay. Sharon? We got the notice that they're starting construction of the historic boulevard stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will that affect? The proposal of the tracks. Will that have anything to do with that? I mean, most likely would they would be doing that at the same time. What? So they would be doing that at the same time. But so it's not as if what they're doing will no, it's just override. A, they're not doing this. Be done. No, right. But so we're looking for like maybe the next Definitely not, Carol. Um, Bradley, I just yeah. was wondering, did you ever have a trip where the four and the five went on the local track? Um, no. Um, I okay. did have... In a hundred days? Yeah. yeah. Really what I did have happen on um, a couple of times was that at the Lex 59th Street station, because of either a person on a track or an investigation, that they were advising us to go up and, and to actually take uh, sick service. <laughs> and so I would, I think it was happened like two or three times, that I would take the six down to either 42nd or 14th Street and then have to transfer back if the 4 or 5 was running silly. Um, okay. again. But um, no further than 14. Did you mention Bradley? that in the report? No. Bradley? It's in extreme commutes. Um, Deb has. Yes. Yeah, I just want to say that um, the timing, your, the release of this report is imminent, I think. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, the timing, as you know, is perfect. Yes. yes. <laughs> Even though it might be delayed from your original project, it's actually quite It turns perfect. out to be pretty and perfect. Yeah. I, yeah. When you roll it out, you know, because you've been in touch with President Byford and Sarah Meyer and all of those there, roll it out, give us an embargo copy or something in advance so everybody, yeah. we're to so there are no surprises. We're hoping to meet with Andy tomorrow, maybe, cool. as soon okay. as possible. I asked him if he's available, he okay. and I sent him okay. the revised okay. report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Good work. No, we, we actually yeah. focused this on fast forward and the way you so you it, you've come a long way. You know? <laughs> the way you've interwoven it. But you will include, really good. before you send it, you will include those asterisks. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Because I, 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 I'm sorry. You, I if you mentioned we CBCT, on, including You called on me. Can I, ask, can I ask my question? Absolutely. Thank you. Question, is there any transferable knowledge that we gain from this that goes to other situations? Secondly, mm -hmm. Is this the worst situation we encountered throughout the subway system? Because a 35-minute gap is quite normal on the A train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a, what we have the language in the report that this is a unique trip, but it's representative of what people are facing throughout the entire system. But is there anything learned from the results? <coughs> it always seems yes. as though we're cherry-picking. No. No. This These can be results, applied in all sorts of places. The point of that slide that shows how many problems there are with the route and why the, the trip is so painful, the point in this is, and you magnify that of how many routes there are, this is just one segment, magnify that, and it's not that we picked it as it is the worst route. How many wor routes are there? It's a sample. Depends on the deck. Uh, but it, it starts to speak <laughs> to why it costs so much. It does sound as if it is a outlier. In, in the report, it's it sounds trip. like this is mega. And I think that we need to address this is standard operating procedure. This is, a, this is a problem we encounter. The only reason people would change at 59th Street was if they were standing no, from so Long Island City. I mean, I, when I do that trip, it would I don't want to go further to go backwards. I, I would I would transfer at the first spot, except 
I've read this report enough times and I'm never doing that transfer again. <laughs> <laughs> and I also always get on at the wrong direction. We always going say on that, train. though, and we always keep doing it. But when I lived, when I lived at, at the 49th Street stop and I would have to make that change, it was, it was awful. Boy. It was just... When I, if I was on the 4-5 and I was changing to go onto the um, NRW, that was, well, not, it was no W when I was doing it, but um, going to 49th Street, it was just a horrible, horrible thing, especially because I always ended up <coughs> every it's, single time. It's, it's particularly problematic for a shorter folks and baby carriages. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think that yeah. needs to be highlighted as well, <laughs> that people, I mean, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm in a crowded car, yep. and people are screaming, move in, move in, and someone has to say, there's a wheelchair down there. Yeah. Um, you know, there's just no acknowledgement that we're there until someone steps on us. Well, Edith is raising an issue that we may want to put in, in the prose that goes along with this report, which is... <laughs> Um, this this trip is representation of a trip that was you know observed. It is by no means an exclusive observation. Many of the problems experienced here apply and and could possibly be even worse on other yeah. lines yeah. in other and in other trip combinations. I think we need that language. Yeah. 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 We do. We do yeah. have that language. And, but and that it was yeah. And, and then when we're talking about it. It is one of the takeaways is also the need for um, system-wide crowd control um, method yes. and methodology. And um, not just metrics, but how to actually... I've actually been methods. almost crowded off a platform no. No, yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some, of your, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Some of your recommendations include the 96 streets. Why? That's a very seems to be already full. It's only, they only built two tracks, which I thought was stupid. Can they absorb more trains on that line? They're going to be absorbing more trains yeah, during yeah, the L train stuff. Capacity. The M's are going to go up there. So. Yeah, well, that's yeah, another reason well, not to also include the ones on the yeah. doing this, because... Yeah. Mr. X? Okay. <coughs> this plan, you know, there's a way you can leave this problem. First of all, the M train should be on the BMT program line, you speak a little not louder? the ID6 out line. That's what they did the Q train years ago. Yeah. Okay, you want to you want to leave that problem? M, local, and QR expense. And Q rush hours only, R not rush hours only. On 57th Street, but the express trains on the 96th Street in addition to 179th Street, this is 3rd Street, but the one express was the 21st and 179th Street all times. The 50th century in here in hand, the one express the 59th sheet in Brooklyn at all times. Below 59th sheet, we built a downtown express track, below 8th Avenue, I should say. There was 72 spots, but it was an uptown express track. I don't know which which 88 hopped off of that Everybody's idea. Everybody's aware of that problem. Of course, and regarding the local train, listen, even 57th Street, the M train will automatically has to run to Lexington Avenue. Where would you have the M train terminate in Queens? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, you didn't even let me finish my point. Mm -hmm. Leave 57th Street, the low traffic will run to Lexington Avenue. Okay, so leave Lexington Avenue. Trains can run to 179th Street. Right in the terminal, it's Sunday Friday, and 179th Street. Mm -hmm. Using that with a little two-street tunnel. Sure. They can run to the Steinway Library, which runs near Denmark's Boulevard, which doesn't meet that street. It only meets 23rd Avenue. Yes. Okay. Also, they can also run to Parks Boulevard in conjunction with 179th Street in the opposite direction. But local trains run to 95th Street. That's how you do it. That's quite a recap. At all times. Wow. That's how you do it. Sounds like a long term. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it can be done. Yeah. No, no, that's like my trip here today. Still, there were people who talked to me about, you know, when they read this alternative syndicate. I had a similar thought about <coughs> alternatives that I sent gradually my thoughts because if the focus is Long Island City, the. Uh, the uh, yellow line is not necessarily the only option people choose. So I said, what about the seven line? Because mm -hmm. that's what Long Island City riders are using. For a moment, I thought you were an out of town and referring to it as the yellow line. <laughs> well, I'm not going to the, the Broadway line. No, so the sea beach, the sea beach line. You know, I'm just going to. It depends on your definition of Long Island City, because I, I live there, but apparently I live uh, in Hundred Point South. I, I gave him the I gave yeah. him the official boundaries of Long yeah, Island City. Yeah, see, my address yeah. is Long Island City, but I live in Astoria. So. Oh. 
that's, that's a yeah, realistic marketing uh, tool. But the bottom line is, <laughs> if, you're going, if you're going downtown, you have other options. And I think just Trudy's point and the collective point is there should be some language to preface yeah. that this is yeah, just yeah. one option. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Absolutely. I, and I do want to clarify that language is in the report, but we will make it stronger more to make it more. Yeah. Yeah. It has, yes. If you if you was referred to instead of referring to the Lexington Avenue line, the express. calling it no the number four and five on the Lexington Avenue line because and the other thing that I would ask because in the report it does make one reference to the number six when you're talking about CBCT and it's just like CBTC. out of the blue CB I always get those alphabets wrong okay what CBTC Right? Computer-based yes. train control. control. Yes. Okay. Um, Consumer-based. I like that. Yeah, very interesting. Okay. But any, anyway, what I am suggesting, out of the blue, all of a sudden six appears. You should mention the number six, and especially when you talk about platform crowding, not only between the NRW and people going up and down at 59th Street, but at any place that there is a transfer point between the express and the local, or between two lines. That's where the platforms tend to be more crowded. We got it. That will be for the part two of the study. No, no, when you're talking no, Lisa, Lisa, I'm really serious. So, uh, me too. Me too, Judy. We have to, this report has, is going to go out. We're going to take all of your... If you can just have some asterisks. We're going to do that. Because we as we committed, we will. Okay, we're, not gonna, we we're not going to start over and do times for transfers of different states. Scott is next. Oh, thank you. Not two times. <laughs> the, problem table, the problem with tabletop exercises is all the executives go. They all know the book. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. When a major incident happens, they're not there. It's the patrol sergeant. It's the battalion chief. Yeah. And for the first 20, 30 minutes, the sergeant, the battalion chief, they fly by the seat of their pants. There's no... Yeah, protocols in place, oh, if this happens, we're bringing the patients to downtown. But EMS pulls up, and they say, no, we can't go to downtown, they're on diversion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's great, all the executives go, and they have the book in front of them, and know exactly what to do. I think because so this would be an in-house, but this is also, it's an in-house one versus what Homeland Security was pulling together. So but the if, ability to get the real, But if you do a tabletop, do with all the agents together, tell them, I don't want the bureau chief there. Yeah. Right. I want the patrol sergeant there. I want the battalion chief there. Oh, that's good to know. And the patrol sergeant is going to look at that and say, mm -hmm. this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. right. But if the bureau chief is sitting in the room, the patrol sergeant is not going to say that. Right. So don't send the bureau chief. You there should the be two, two different, maybe two different kinds. Of course, if you put an, ex if you put an executive chief. there, that right. sergeant will not, in front of that chief, yeah. say this will not work. Right, but the chiefs are the ones who can make the interagency agreement. So they should have one separate they, meeting and then the tabletop with the actual on the ground people. They can make all the agreements they want. Mm -hmm. When it goes down, right. it's the sergeant and the battalion yeah. chief doing everything for 30 minutes. Know, okay, yeah. In Manhattan, all the executives show up fairly quickly. You're in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. You're on your own. Mm -hmm. So, so right. you can do a tabletop. Get the guys there who actually do the work, okay. not the guys who write the policy. Right. That's, a, that's good. Um, Bert's good. I just had a question for Bernie. He talked about the bus lane on Lexington. Mm -hmm. How close are they to doing something like that? <laughs> is that just in your imagination? Or is it? Uh, <laughs> it's an you know, Ellen and I kind of worked on that together. Uh -huh. um, Ellen has more experience with that because she's been in New York longer than I have. Um, but people often used to take the buses down Lexington Avenue, but because bus speeds have become so slow, that people are now getting onto the subway line, which is overcrowded. When you look at the time, oh, over time, how that trip has lengthened and lengthened and lengthened. And then well, I'm just wondering if they're close to it, because they did it on the 5th end overnight. I mean, Lexington I, is, you know, the narrowest. At, at, at one moment, I yeah. woke up on 59th Street South, there's a two-lane bus line. So there, the, and, and nobody, as far as I know, I didn't talk about it. Now the buses move beautifully down Fifth Avenue, right. but right. the two lanes left for traffic and trucks and Trump, all of which <laughs> makes it impossible. The three T's. To, <laughs> yeah, makes it impossible to get down Fifth Avenue. Right. Now they're planning to move up. And this is Trump. I, I did a, a Google view down Lexington yeah. Avenue, and what was shocking was to see how many you know huge electrical units for 
you know, uh, uh, building operations, how many long-term construction projects that look like they haven't gone anywhere in years. I mean, the obstacles on Lexington, and not on the bus side, on the other side, that makes it that much more narrow. It's a very narrow it's, avenue. Uh, or, or a construction we're, 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 we're site, yeah. So there, there, there are a lot of issues. There's also the problem, let's come back to the fact that nothing is happening about clearing bus lanes. Yeah. As yeah. much as it's they right. can talk about it, NTSP. you know, they're going to have five vehicles towing cars, <laughs> blocking. Excuse me, that doesn't even cover Fifth Avenue. Right. I used to sit there in my office and look down at Fifth Avenue and watch from one o'clock on the tow trucks coming in and pulling everything off Fifth Avenue out of the express bus lane. Everything. And they would, you know, and the express bus drivers would come from having lunch and would actually, you know, and empty it out. It, it turned into a ghost town. But none of the rest of us have that pleasure. We instead are <clears throat> stuck in traffic in every bus stop. Yeah, they made a big announcement about clearing out. Um, but until the state... Five vehicles, until citywide. The, until the state legislature passes the ability to possibly threaten your vehicle registration by multiple, you know... Yes, yeah, three strikes in your ass. Yeah. Well, they also but have the to put the cameras in the buses. So yeah, they, they do. Well, yeah. the, don't forget the announcement was made by the mayor's office. They did not consult exactly. the legislature, what you're talking about, at all. No. So it was just an announcement for having an announcement. It was a feel-good. Yeah, exactly. Enough of those tickets, though. Right. We'll cause you not only a headache, but can't cause you to get your license suspended. But a lot, of, a lot of the big corporations and a lot of the, especially delivery firms and whatever, yeah. it's, worked it's, worked into, it's, it's worked into their budgets. Sorry, they have the it's a cost of doing business, of course. Of cost of doing business, yes. exactly. Absolutely. Any other um, comments that haven't been made on the report, which I think is a fabulous effort? And yes. I, I have one thing to share. Sure. So I, I started here just over five months ago, mm -hmm. and I came in and this report was in its formative stages, a lot of work had gone into it, all the data was together, and the, and the, and the, um, and the, and the pros and the descriptions. This is light years from where it started. It was really good, solid foundation, mm -hmm. but Bradley and, and Ellen, but Bradley, this is your, I've seen you birth this baby, basically. <laughs> It's really fabulous. So, thank you. Mr. X, you want to say something? Also, the Gun and Bradley's plan. Uh huh. Which part? The 2345 train. Yeah. Okay, first of all, the express train should operate as long as you can have only. Since the new Washington Hallway, it's built by the Okay, you get the first thing, Frank, let's fight for that. The portion, the low, that portion, also put the low, 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 let the two and three trains oh, and put the low, 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 and Astor Street, since it means Astor Street, not Lutz Avenue, yeah. Yeah. and then we got Utica Avenue, which doesn't mean Utica Avenue, it only means Shenectee Avenue. Yeah. In order for the media to have it has to be extended, the platform has to be extended from the northeast you know or you uh know, east of Parkway. You know, yeah, it's really connected. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So in case you didn't know. Yeah, I'm I'm into that state. There are some stations that don't meet the, the street that they're named for. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's true. It's interesting. Very true. Oh, they're many. All right. So um so you're gonna um incorporate the yes, um, I think comments, uh, comments that put into this will help make this and folks stronger, we're going to so try to schedule the um, press conference with Andy mm -hmm. Byford's office mm -hmm. on this everybody will get notice of that next week. we hope it'll be next week because as Deborah uh, said this is very timely right now yeah. and, uh, and and could use and the fast forward plan could use the boost as of, as of now. All right, uh, let us go to old business. Anyone, Stuart? So again, did the stations department get back to you with the cleaning schedule? Uh, actually, I have, to, I have the deep cleaning schedule that I need to send you, but that's probably old by now. That's why it's old business. It's old yeah. <laughs> but I'm buff. And did, uh, did we ever hear more on our fair fair? With the uh, um, Long Island Railroad uh, experience. Oh, the, the Atlantic, Atlantic, Atlantic ticket, you mean? Yeah, Atlantic ticket. I saw a brochure for 
the, no, the brochures are out there, and uh, Lisa brought it to Albany. Um, to uh, interestingly, that you mentioned that one of the people who is not supportive of congestion pricing is Leroy Comrie, who represents Southeast Queens. Yeah. Oh. Oh yes. And head of transportation. Yeah. No. Uh, 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 no, someone authority. from Buffalo is ahead of no, no. Say, Senator Kennedy. Yes, Kennedy is there. Yeah, but, but, uh, he but and David Weprin. I mean, we've gone out of our way to explain to Southeast Queens politicians why this is a good plan for them. And in fact, it's even being talked about for the four new Metro North stations in the Bronx that the New Haven line is going to have when Penn Access final, when we finally see that. So, you know, Atlantic ticket slash freedom ticket. Did Leroy get, knows about it. He's even mentioned it on occasion. Yet he is. He, I actually asked. Did um, get the data? Data? I asked he's, folks at the MTA doing, yesterday. Wow. Have you actually spoken to uh, legislators about what's in it for their districts? And that's why they're one of the reasons they're in Albany today, yep. going over all of these things. Edith. Um, I don't know how many of you know uh, about the. 20 elevators in Washington Heights uh -huh. that are being replaced and will not serve the platform. But there are 20 elevators being put in um, 168, 181st, 190th on the 1 train, 190 on the A, and 184th on the A. 20 elevators. 184th Street, end of 181. End of 181. Yep. It's yep. easier to say 184th it because is. people think you're talking about the escalator otherwise. Absolutely. And that's my station, so that's why I put it that way. All right, it's your Okay, station. so it's 20 elevators that are being put in that are absolutely no, 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 no accessibility. So they're from mezzanine to street only? Yes. Uh, yes. There you go. Uh, I mean, excuse me, How people. Much money is, uh, that's, That's 20 Why elevators. More? And you know, one more down. Okay. Uh, well, no, yeah. The answer, I, I can really answer that. Space, That's space very space. serious. Oh, yeah. um, the one train is just really so narrow on, on the platforms and so tall. They're cathedral the ceilings. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't you been there. Say fall in. Take, excuse unless, me? Right, unless they fall down. Right. Yes, as they fall down, exactly. Well, 168 has been repaired. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, it's a terribly long, yeah. you can't, there's no way to do the loop back, there's no way to do the flats. As a resident of Washington Heights, I don't know that I would take that anyway. I have, I have actually climbed those from, you know, it's, it's only 14 flights of stairs, come on. 191 is deep. Mm. The deepest. Yeah. One eighty four is not not much better. One sixty eight is pretty damn deep as well. Yeah. Um, historically, at least one sixty eight was supposed to have an elevated to the platform. Mm -hmm. At the time they were originally done, you know, with the dawn of man, the decision was not to do it to the platform for safety concerns, and those air spaces were seated. 